Right, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming down to hear our press conference to publicize the bill which is coming up on February the 23rd in Leicester. Uh, our shows in Leicester of late have gone extremely well. Good following for the fighters, some of whom are Leicester-based, who you see in front of us now. And uh, topping the bill, Sam Bowen was supposed to be against Ronnie Clark, but Frank, you've got, first of all, before we go any further, uh, an announcement to make about that. Yeah, yet again, he's pulled out, so that's the, uh, the fellow who's selling his belt. I don't think he'll have a belt to sell soon. Um, he's you know, it's ridiculous. I don't understand why he went and got, wanted a bit the fight in the first place. But, so he's gone now, so we've got to find a new opponent for Sam, and hopefully uh, by the end of the week we'll be in a position to announce the opponent. But whatever happens, he will be fighting Leicester, defending his title. So apologies, but all beyond our control. So you're convinced it's still going to be for a British title? Yeah, he, we want it to be for a British title, if anyone's got the balls to come up there and take the fight with him. But having said that, if it's not, it'll be for another title. Whatever happens, he will fight for a title. The objective this year is to keep him busy, keep him you know, working hard, and, and it's a great domestic scene. There's quite a few young fighters out there uh, who are going to be coming back in, in, in that division, and, uh, and I'm hoping that uh, we can make those fights up in Leicester. But whatever happens, uh, Sam will fight. Well, we'll hear a bit more from Sam in a minute or two, but you can see a lot of uh, fighters in front of you here, and uh, I think probably as, as well to start anywhere as for a, a Midlands title fight. And often you find that these area title fights, Frank, and, and the British title fights are sometimes more dramatic than the so-called super fights that we all, we all have to pay for. And, uh, and on here we have uh, CJ and Kyle Hayward, which, you know, which, are, which are on paper is a, a tremendous fight. Two undefeated well, fighters. There you go, you said it, they're undefeated. So uh, unless it's a draw, uh, somebody's going to lose their O, as they say. So um, they are, they're, they're always highly competitive, these type of fights. That's the, what we try, to, we, that's our philosophy in making uh, these undercards, making real competitive fights on the undercard, and this certainly is one. And, uh, you know, these two guys, uh, you know, they've got to look up now, they can probably fight tomorrow. They're in great condition, ready to go, so it's going to be a fantastic fight on the night. And from a, a Leicester perspective, it's kind of a, a bragging rights fight, isn't it? You've got uh, CJ, who's with Hudge, and down here, you've got Kyle, who's with Carl, you know, which yeah. is, uh, which is it's, it's everything that you want in a, in a local derby battle. It's the Battle of Leicester, that's what it is, and, uh, and as I say, I think we're going to see something a little bit special on the night with these two guys. Well, let's hear from the two lads. Kyle, first of all, undefeated in eight fights. Earl Shilton, man, and a, and a yeah. southpaw. How do you fancy this fella? Yeah, well, what a fight this is. Like, if anyone that's from Leicester, um, it's always been on the cards for both of us. Um, both undefeated, like you said. Someone's always got to go. It's not only who's the best in Leicester, but who's the best in the Midlands for this fight. So, so yeah. Have, you ever, have you ever sparred him? What do you know about him? No, it's funny, really, because... Um, We've fought on the same amateur shows, we've fought on the same pro shows, but we've never sparred. Uh, our gyms are only a stone throw away from each other, so, yeah. Was it always at the back of your mind that definitely. somewhere down the line, yeah, CJ's going to be somebody who you're going yeah, against? Yeah, 100%. Like, we, I think we boxed on the same, uh, as amateurs, we boxed in the Midlands final, both of us together. And like, we supported each other in that, and which was nice, but in the back of both our minds was like, you know, we're going to possibly be on the same path, similar sort of weights and that. So, so yeah, it was always it was always a thing ever since turning professional. We turned pro about similar times. Um, but yeah, what a fight! So excited. What was you? What was your route into boxing? I mean, are you are you somebody who has who's been involved in boxing since you were, since you were eight years old? No, or are, you, are you a relative late? Yeah, guy? no. I, I started boxing. Like I went to a boxing gym when I was twelve for the first time. Um, boxed as an amateur till I was about uh, 18, 19. Left the sport for a bit. Uh, come back when I was like 24, 25. Fell in love with it again, but ten tenfold, do you know what I mean? Like, I was never taking it serious when I was young. Um, it was just sort of something that I did. Whereas when I went back, you know, I had maturity and life experience and, you know, 
I'd done things and I know what I know what I wanted and what I could gain from the sport. So yeah, full dedication and 100% Carl Haywood on the night. So this is everything to me. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, let's uh, say say hello to CJ, who's going to be fighting you for this Midlands area title, a Leicester lad and uh, a local derby. What's your thoughts on it? It's a great fight. Um, yeah, again, Leicester puts on a great show. Two people, undefeated boxers. Yes, Leicester's always providing. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And I think the whole boxing community should be looking forward to it as well. How, how often do you get people putting on their O, putting their O on the line? It's not, it's not often that people do this. A lot of people want to get protected and looked after um, and not take risks. So it's great, for, it's great for the city, it's great for boxing, it's great for Frank Warren, it's great for BT Sports, and it's great for us fighters. And what's your thoughts about, about him? Because obviously he knows all about you. How, how, how highly do you rate him? How difficult is he likely to be? Yeah, of course. Obviously, he's, he's going to be. A, he's a good operator. Like, like he said himself, we know each other. Um, so yeah, you, you have to always respect your opponents. You can't ever get in with any Tom Dick or Harry and expect them to be any sort of level. You have to always prepare for the best and expect the best. And then on the night, you pull it out of the bag. Do you get on well, or is it going to be one of these as the fight comes a bit closer that you're going to be growling at each other? No, of course, obviously it's, it is what it is, you know. The, there's no animosity between the both of us, but you know, I think I can beat him, and he thinks he can beat me, and that's that's all there is to it. The last it's time, personal. You know? The last time I had two people, we had two people here who were saying that sort of thing. I think was. Uh, Josh Warrington and Carl Frampton, and look at the first two rounds we got there. Sometimes you don't you don't have to have people throwing tables at each other no, for yeah, it to be right. for it to be a big fight. That's it. That's it. You know, um, like he says, you're not you're not in this sport if you don't think you can beat anyone. If you if I was to be sat here or he was to be sat there saying that the other thinks the other's going to win, <laughs> something's not something's not right there. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, everyone says the right things. It's just on the night you turn up, do your job, everyone thinks they can win, so. Tell us a little bit about life in, uh, in, in Hudger's gym up there in Leicester and the sort of atmosphere that you've got in there. Because I know he, when you talk to him, he, he talks about it's almost being like a family atmosphere. Do you feel that? Yeah, most definitely. Every day is different. Like, you could not write a formula for the gym. Every day is different. You don't know what to expect when you walk in the gym. You, you sometimes you come out of the gym thinking, what the hell have I just done? Um, but the, the chemistry between everyone in the gym is, is amazing. Um, it's just filled with love. It's a, it's a great place to be. And I actually think it's a great breeding ground for success. And I hear that there's a former world champion, Chris Pyatt, who's in there passing on a few tips now as well. Yeah, it's, it, you know what? It's, it's amazing to be around um, such pioneers of the sport the sport in general, let alone for our city. Um, it's great to pick up little bits of knowledge here and there. It's, there's little things, someone that's been so high and so far in the game, there's little things that you don't know. So to have that advice on deck is, is amazing. Well, we look forward to uh, what on paper is going to be a, a very, very level fight indeed. Now, next to Kyle there, we've got Sam Maxwell, who's also on the bill. And uh, Frank, Sam, very, very highly talented and uh, decorated amateur fighter and now starting to make genuine ripples as a professional. He is, and I think this year's going to be his year. He's, uh, he's, he's been quite patient um, since he's turned pro, but now it's all about stepping up and he wants to step up. He's ready to go. I think he's one of the most exciting, young, well, exciting talents in the country. And he's still a young man. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to him uh, seeing him in, in Leicester. And he will be busy this year. And he's, if he's not got some sort of title, um, meaningful title, but, or a belt around his waist by the end, I'll be very, very surprised. Undefeated in, undefeated in 10 fights. Yeah, and, and he's he looked good fight, every time. Yeah, knocked eight of them out, stops eight of them. So he can punch and he can box and he's, uh, he's nice to work with. Sam, how, how happy are you so far with the way your career is going? I'm, I'm uh, very happy to be honest. Um, you know, uh, I've been pro for about two and a half years now. I've had ten fights, and 
Um, Frank's told me and my manager told me be patient. Like I, I'm, I think I've been ready for a while now to step up, but if say be patient, but uh, it looks like they, um, yeah, they're putting into motion. I'm, I've got a um, big step up. So if you could look at what you want out of 2019, you know we're all at the beginning of a new year, all with hopes about what might what might pan out. What would you like to see? I just want to be challenging the big names. Like so, it's been I've been posting a bit about O'Hara Davis and um, people like that. I want to be in the ring with them. You know, I want to be challenging them. I think that I'm I'm ready and um, yeah, just just I'm ready for it. What do you reckon, Frank? Who are the names who he I might think, be no, ready I, I for? I think you just said a name. I mean, him, him and O'Hara would be a great fight. You're going to find out what Sam's got, and we're going to see what you know where O'Hara is. I mean, then that's what I like to hear from fighters who want to who want to do that. So that should be a difficult fight to make. Everything's all sort of been fairly comfortable so far. It's looked it. Yeah, we, definitely. Um, you know, I box at a very high level in the amateur, so so my transition to the pros, the level opponent, I, I can deal with easily. So I'm, I'm I've been ready for my step up for for a long time, well for a while now, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the challenge. So looking forward to uh, maybe having another eye-catching win on this show on February 23rd. Yeah, that's it. Any, uh, any opponents in, in mind as yet, the Frank? guys are working on the undercover. You know, it's just after Christmas, you've got to see who's around and who's not, who's not overweight after uh, eating all their Christmas pudding and whatever else. So <laughs> seeing who's around. Now, we'll sort it out. Leon, back in the ring after suffering the first defeat in your career, in the last uh, the last time out in October, yeah. against Archie Sharp, how difficult for you was that to take? Um, I feel like a lot of people like assumed it would have hit me differently to how it actually did. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, leading up to the fight, I was like, I very much said like how I felt about the fight, what I think could happen, and I said if. If, if it did happen, I got put down, I'd get back up, I'd fight on, and I literally just lived up to everything that I said. Do you get what I'm saying? So, to me, like, what I learned from the fight and taken away from it was massive, and you can't, there's no amount of money that can buy what you get from the, them experiences, do you know what I'm saying? So, what I've taken away from it has been massive, it's been huge, so it, it, I wasn't like, down like pure hurt and like oh and feeling sorry for myself I, I was literally thinking right where have I got to go next to like what, what's the next step how can I use this um, situation to better me do you get what I'm saying so with people around me like CJ and Hodge helping me move forward it, it, it wasn't a massive hit to me do you know what I'm saying I never said I was going to finish my career undefeated I just said where I want to go and what I want to be and whatever I've got to go through on the way to that point, so be it. And of course, you only had something like, was it 25 amateur fights? Yeah, 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 25. I think all fights, I think I've had like less than 40 fights altogether. So I'm doing, I'm doing all right, man. Like, look, look, in like, I think just less than two years, I've picked up two titles. I fought an undefeated fighter. I fought game fighters. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of people that ain't really making them steps yet and, and I'm doing that. I'm living up to what I'm saying and I'm going to get what I've said that I'm going to get. I will become a world champion. I will do what I need to do. But it's just about taking the right steps at the right time and making every situation a moment that happens count, whether it's a win or a loss. I'm not <coughs> going to be defined by a loss the same way I wouldn't get defined by a win. You understand? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Frank, we, we, we live in an era sometimes where a defeat, people are, are automatically starting to be written off. If you, if you went back a, a few decades, you know, I mean, a, having a defeat was just part of a career. And, and a lot of the very, very highly rated fighters had early career defeats and yet came on to, yeah. to be exceptional. Well, you know, a defeat can be the making of you in some ways. And, and uh, it's only, was it last week or the week before? Uh, Amir Khan was sitting here fighting Terence Crawford now. And you look at him, he got knocked out in one round by Brady Prescott. Prescott. Mm. And he's been beaten a couple of times since, but he got beaten early in his career. Um, you should take inspiration from that. It's all about learning. It's what you learn from your defeat. That's what it's about, you know, not letting it, not letting it. You know, fight, a fighter is what he is, he's a fighter. And if every, in life, his ups and downs. You've got to overcome the problems, you overcome the downs, and if you lose, get back to the drawing board and work hard. If you're a young man, you can do it. And, he, and I believe that Leon can do that. 100%, man, of course. You, before that setback happened against, against Archie Sharp, 
Sam was very much in your in your uh, in your target vision. He's sitting here now. I mean, do you still feel the motivation to think this is the man I want before too long? I'll tell, I, let me tell you something. There's not one single particular person that's in my sights. Anyone that stands in the way of what I want to get to, that's my target, and I'll bowl I'll bowl them over to get there. Whether it takes my first attempt or second attempt, I will get through them and get to where I need to get to. So whoever's in the way, that that's that's my target. I ain't gonna like fixate on one singular person because that's a bit weird. <laughs> but to be actually to say that you're top dog in your in your area, that surely would be a special thing, wouldn't it? If he's there and he's in the way of where I want to get to, then yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not targeting on no, on no one. Like, whoever's the best at the time or whoever I need to fight at the time to get to where I need to, that's who I want to fight. That's who I'm interested in. And if that fight were to happen, Frank, I mean, that yeah, would great be a, fight, a, it, a very Leicester. marketable one. Fantastic fight for Leicester. So, you know, Leon, get yourself back on track and then that's something we can visit later this year. How highly do you still rate the lad? I mean, do you? I know early in it, very early in his career, you 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 sort of earmarked him and highlighted him as somebody who, in your opinion, was was special. Yeah, he is, and I think he's got all the attributes. You know, again, um, it's all about sometimes the amateur experiences that you've had, and he's not had a tremendous amount of amateur experience, but he's now getting experience, and he's working hard, and I still believe that he can do it. I believe he, you know, he, he's, he has a great opportunity which will provide for him. To, to prove that he can do it. You know, it's, it's, it's been such a game show, such a good division. You know, you've got, you know, with uh, Sam here, you've got also uh, Zelfa Barrett coming back. Um, there's a few of the other young guys there. there. There's some great fights to be made, some really some really good quality fights that I believe will be, uh, you know, great for the fans to watch. Now, what about, what about Sam? How good do you think he is? Because I know Carl Thor, well, years he's been he's been bending anybody's ear who cares to listen about uh, about how talented he is. How highly do you rate it? Well, he is talented. In his last fight, he was excellent. I mean, he didn't put a foot wrong and done the job and done it in style. And that's what it's all about. He stepped up to the plate. He had the opportunity there, grabbed it with both hands, and that's why he's sitting where he is now. Got the British title by <laughs> stopping Maxi Hughes in yeah. April last year, and then beat Cabral. In October, yeah. But uh, you know, I mean, it's 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 must be Sam frustrating having been looking at fighting Ronnie Clark that now that's not happening. Uh, yeah, it's at this point, like I said, we only found out yesterday. Uh, training was going well to fight Ronnie, and it was going to be a brilliant fight. He's come forward strong, um, aggressive fight. He proved that when he boxed Alpha. Um, and that, that would have made a great fight with my style as well because we're very similar, both come forward so there won't be much chasing down they're both literally toe-to-toe, -to -toe, good scrap but no, it's very disappointing that he's pulled out I don't know his reasons or why but like I say, potentially we've got bigger and better opportunities now coming our way You had, a, you had a, <coughs> an injury yourself which kept you out at the back end of the year what was it, a rib injury? Yeah, um, damaged my rib in sparring I think it was the muscle coming away from the rib like I say, I got it with a, a body shot um, who was that? Who was that you were sparring? Uh, David Ava, you know, we were supposed oh, to yeah, box yeah. Josh Kelly. Yeah. I mean, extremely good um, sparring partner, tough, extremely strong. Um, it was just after the sparring, uh, I was just in extreme agony. <coughs> and I struggled to drive home, left it a few days, went doctor, and they said that they, what you've done is because I wasn't winded in the sparring, it was weird, it felt like I'd been stabbed. Um, like I said, extreme agony after, and uh, yeah, they said it's more than likely you've uh, you've possibly cracked the rib, or they said the muscles come away from the rib. So, like I said, they don't they, they refused an X-ray. I booked in private at um, Nuffield, and they rang me and they said they won't X-ray suspected damage rib. So you're hundred percent now. Hundred percent now. Like I said, back in sparring, feeling good, and uh, no. I know it's a people people sort of always raise an eyebrow when people say how does it feel but when you've got that famous uh, that famous belt how does it feel you know to 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 be walking around as a champion well, when I won the title um, at Leicester I was like buzzing I think you can see with the reaction I gave after um, especially in Leicester with all my friends and family there uh, the titles just allow me um, Opportunities to fight these big fights. If you ain't got a title, you, you got to work your way up to get these big fights. But now, 
all my fights with when you're defending your belt, they're big, big, big fights, aren't they? And that's what yeah. I've been working for all my career. You don't want to be thinking, oh, one day I'll have that belt. Like now, that time's here, I've got this belt, and and my aim's to defend whatever belt I've got. Like I've got two belts, so I could be defending the British, could be defending this. You know what I mean? It's I've got options now. So. 2019, when you, you look ahead to the months in front of you, how far would you hope to go in the following, you know, in 2019? Whatever opportunities or options get put on a plate towards me, I'll take them. Um, I'm in the sport to provide for my family. Like I say, I've, there's been videos of like my daily routine, working, training. That ain't, for my idea of 2019, is not doing that. Like I say, I'm due to go back to work after this fight. I booked all my holiday up for this fight. So if I, ideally, after this fight, get a good win, and then I can hopefully jack my job in. If, if not, I don't know what I'm going to do, because... I've got no holidays left, so you'll, 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 we'll, we'll have to do the weighing at Caterpillar. <laughs> Give us an idea what your average day is like. You know, those, those people, well, those of us who find it difficult to get out of bed at 8 o'clock in the morning and are sort of knackered come 7 o'clock at night. What's your average day like? <clears throat> a typical one of my odd, on a Monday, for example, Mondays are an odd day, obviously, after the weekend. Um, I wake up between 4.30 and 5. Uh, I, I do my morning run, say, I don't know, four mile get home, have a shower, have my breakfast. Um, I'm really good at prepping everything, so literally my clothes are folded, everything's out. I literally get my bowl out with my cereal in, everything, because otherwise you've literally got no time. Um, have my drink, have my breakfast, travel to work. We do 10 hour shifts at Caterpillar. Um, do my 10 hour shift. To be fair, I turn off when I'm there. I don't really think about boxing, because I suppose it is a good way to turn off and just, just get on with what I'm doing leave work and travel to Newark with the traffic in the evening it's probably an hour and 20 hour and 30 like I say depend on traffic train with Carl have a good grafting session hour and a half usually and then travel home I usually get him I usually bring the missus on the way home I get him between 8 and 8 30 in the evening um, she'll have my dinner made for me and then like I say eat my dinner have my shower that I usually go bed about 10 like I say I don't give much, much it is time. A, it is absolutely it's full, full on, on then, isn't so, it? yeah it's, it's extremely full and I'm exhausted so that's what I went when people say, like, do you watch much boxing on the weekend and stuff, I think not really, because I've got to turn off a little bit from it, because otherwise it, my life would just consume boxing work. I'd have no personal life. So. Well, the opportunities are going to be there, I guess, Frank. They certainly and are. Things are. things could very well significantly change. And he's dedicated, isn't he, Sam? So, you know, he'll make them happen, and the opportunities will be there for him. No doubt about it. Right, let's uh, turn attention then to <clears throat> Anthony on the left here. Who? I'm going to have to put my... Uh, reading glasses on here so I can get it exactly, the old man glasses. Mehdi Amar from France, 36 years old, 35 wins, 60 feet, 16 by stoppage, but he went points against former world champion Robert Stieglitz and also only lost on points to the man who is currently the WBC champion, Alexander Gvozdik. This is Mehdi Amar and Gvozdik has since been the man who has pretty much ruined Adonis Stevenson. So this is a real fighter, Frank. Yeah, it's a step up again for him. And that's what, what the uh, plan's always been with uh, Anthony. You know, Sunday and I have a lot of discussions about what fights we want to make and making the, the right fights for him. And I, I hope this is going to be a right, you know, a fight for him. Um, if he stops him, that's going to be a, a massive statement because the other guys didn't stop him. So it's, you know, it, for, for him, it's a, he's a tough opponent. And he'll get the best out of Anthony. There's no doubt about that. Seven. So, uh, sorry, you know Anthony. You got to remember last year he, he finished on a low. He's supposed to have been on the undercard of Tyson and Wilder, and all that nonsense and crap that was going on with the uh, local commission and that there stopped it from happening, which was very frustrating for everybody concerned. More importantly for Anthony, so he wants to make sure uh, this year that he's busy and he's getting the fights that we, and getting into the position where we've, uh, you know, what we talked about and discussed and making it happen. Making it happen being, making it happen being a world title fight at some well, stage before one. too he's long. Ranked, he's ranked number one by the WBO and uh, that, that fight takes place uh, in a couple of weeks time, doesn't it? The rematch between um, um, Kovalev. Kovalev and uh, um, Alvarez. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Alvarez. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Alvarez. Sorry, yeah, Alvarez got it right. Yeah, um, and potentially that's uh, that would be the winner of that one would be in the in the target. Well, you know, we're we're looking. I mean, the WBO at the moment are talking about putting the fight out. We'll we'll 
let's get this one out of the way, then we'll sit down and go through it and see where we're at. But that's what we talked about for him. They're the sort of fights that he wants. I'm sure bit, he can tell you that himself. Well, let's ask. You've got, uh, you've got this guy coming up in front of you. He's got a good record, certainly on paper. He's been in with some very, very tough men. How close are you now to actually being where you want to be, to being absolutely top of the pile? And how much of a danger is this man? Well, first, thanks everyone for coming. Thanks all the media, Frank Warren, everyone else. And um, in terms of fights, literally, whoever's put in front of me, I know this is a line that you've heard so many times over the years, but whoever's put in front of me, I've got a job to do. Um, everyone knows I like, the knockout, I like getting the knockout. But again, no matter who is put in front of me or what opponent I've got to fight, I've got a job to do, and that's for me to win the best way I can. Um, in my opinion, the best way is to get a knockout for the fans and for myself, my own ego. <laughs> but, um, that's literally my job. Um, I don't focus on nothing else. This guy's been put in front of me for this particular occasion, 23rd of February, so that's my focus. 17 wins now, 16 by stoppage. You do have a liking for the, uh, for the big shot, don't you? Well, it's entertainment. I feel like, um, you know, the, the era when everyone was watching Matt Tyson, the whole excitement thing was, how long is it going to last? Um, you know, the ferociousness, the, the entertainment factor, being explosive and entertaining. I know you, you plan things meticulously with Tunde, your, your trainer, but in your, in your own mind now, how close do you believe you are to the top? I think I'm very, very, very close. Um, again, I've said this from the beginning, when I'm world champion, I'll say the same thing, everything's timing. Um, you can be world champion, again, you got a, the next fight you have should be at the best time for you and your own career. So um, I'm not world champion yet, but at the same time, I'm still saying everything's timing. No matter who the world champion is, um, I feel like I need to put myself in a position where I can challenge for that world title when the time's up. There are other uh, there are other talents around. I mean, do you think you're absolutely provided you come through this, ready for a, a world title shot, maybe in 2019? Well, I, I try not to focus on the competition. I try to focus on myself, where I'm at, mentally and physically. Um, so I try to look at a picture as if it's any error. I say to myself, am I ready to fight for a world title? It don't matter who the world champion is. It could be Kovalev, it could have been um, Stevenson. Hope, hope, obviously he's getting better and things like that. Yeah. I wish him all the best, but um, it could have been any world champion. I'm just naming two people that I know their names. Um, but I need to work on myself, and that's being ready for anyone that's put in front of me. Not only when I become world champion, but after that as well. He thinks he's nearly there then. Frank, what do you, what do you rank? I think he's right, you know. Look, we've, people keep saying, uh, you know, when's he going to get the, you know, when's he going to do the big fight? I could make him, a, I could have made a world title fight for him last year. We were offered a couple of shots at the world title. But it's, it's not about getting a fight, to, it's not about fighting for the world title, it's about winning it and defending it and doing it at the right time. It's timing. You know, it's not a, I use, I always use the old adage, it's not like a, 100 metre or 100 yard dash, it's a marathon. And he's getting there. You know, I'm, I'm, as I say, I'm a little bit annoyed about what happened towards the end of last year with that fight, because he needed that. But this one will bring the best out of him. And then we'll see where we are with it. But he, you know, he's, a, he's an exceptional talent. When you look again, the, you know, again, I know I bang on about it, about the limited amateur experience. He's only had, what now is it, uh, 46 rounds as a pro. But he does the business in the ring, he's exciting. You know, he can take you out of either hand. He stalks guys. You know, you're just waiting for something to happen. You know it's going to happen. As soon as he lands one of those exorcists, it's all over. How frustrating was it missing out on that December 1st outing on Tyson's undercard? Do you know what? Um, initially, Frank will tell you, when he was telling me that they pulled the fight, my jaw started clinching. I started to get upset. I started to get angry. But then, literally minutes later, I went back to my beliefs, you know, a lot of people say they believe in things like that, but I said, literally, some things happen for a reason. Um, not in my mind, nothing negative, but again, timing, you know, maybe it's not m my time to be fighting at that stage yet, or maybe I've got a different route to go. So I always see something positive. Um, Frank said that it was a, 
a low for me at the end of the year. I disagree. I think I had a fantastic 2018. Um, and literally, it's just, again, motivation. Three wins in 2018 you had, didn't you? Three wins, um, three stoppages. So, again, all that whole occasion did for me is, again, I gained experience. You know, as Frank said, the commission over there do things are very, very different. So, again, I got that experience to go out there, see how they do things. Um, again, I fought in Texas before. They do things different. Um, so, again, for me, I just gained a lot of experience from it. It dug a hole in my belly and made me even more hungry. Just broadening it slightly, um, now that you, you, you know, you've been 17 fights undefeated, you've become a, a well-known sportsman. Clearly, you're going to be somebody who's very much recognised in your community. How much, how much do you enjoy that? Um, it just comes. It comes with it. Um, I try to just focus on the goals. I try not to get caught up with all the, they call it hype, because hype don't last um, forever anyway. So I literally got a job to do. And that's, again, I've got my goals. I want to become world champion. Um, I want to unify, um, become a pay-per-view fighter, etc. And all these things come with time. It don't just come over that. Um, so, again, stages and stages. You can really visualise this and you feel as though you're on the road. Most definitely. Anthony, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, all going to be seen on February the 23rd, Frank? All going to be seen on, uh, on BT and in the States on uh, ESPN. So great exposure for all the guys. Uh, it's up to them to get out there and sell themselves and look good. We've also got a great undercard. Got Ryan Garner undefeated on there, Willie Hutchinson, Ryan Hutton, Tommy Fury and Mark Chamberlain. They're all good quality young fighters, so it's a fantastic card. Absolutely. And Leicester, uh, it's a great, if you've not been up there, it's a, a tremendous uh, arena yeah. for yeah. boxing yeah. and it generates a terrific atmosphere, some local favourites on the card. And I'm sure it's going to be another special one. So uh, all the guys here are going to have uh, uh, opportunities now to do one-on-one -on -one interviews as you might wish. And we'll...